Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and you're listening to uh, I, this episode. I will post on. Yeah, I guess I'll post it on all th- on on opinions of Alex Merced and uh, thinking and feeling libertarian because some of it is general sort of like general pol- thinking through policy. Uh, specifically, the topic is reparations. Um, and just kind of thinking through that because people usually have a very guttural feeling when they think of reparations like you hear that term and people are either okay the reaction is no the people who were aggrieved by things like slavery have been long dead just because you are the great 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 grandchild of let's say a slave doesn't necessarily mean um there's anything owed to you at this point that's one point of view the other point of view being okay well you know there's this thing that happened we haven't really dealt with it in the sense like we haven't really like you know, while we got rid, we stopped doing the bad thing, and then we stopped doing the still bad things we did right afterwards. We haven't dealt with the damages of the things that were done, and those damages have led to sort of generations of sort of disparate outcomes and things like that. Okay, and we'll explore a lot of this stuff because. Uh, there's sense to all both sides, both extremes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the only answer is in the extreme. Okay, so, and then there's also sort of like the inconsistencies where some people are like, yeah, they're okay with, um, you know, land grants to to Native Americans, but then have a big issue with the idea of reparations to African Americans. Um, they both come from the same place in the sense that Historically, the U.S. government, whether it was something that we wanted the government to do or not, speaking as a citizen of the U.S., um, did, that had negative outcomes. And the idea being to sort of repair the cultural divide in the sense that there's always this tension between different parts of the culture because there's this sort of like this, this, this society, sort of like the way people look back at history is different because of of you know where their ancestors were in that <clears throat> okay um in a sense that like hey if you are and again i will, I will point out some nuance to this um you know if you are a great grandchild of someone who was able to build wealth during this whole time because you had access to markets you were able to own property you were able to vote so you had a, you had all this ability to exercise influence in society at that time that helps you build wealth helps you build something to give to your future generations your future generations are better are are theoretically better off now again of course you're always going to have those people who um you know screw it up you know there's this there is definitely the cycle where basically you know people build wealth and then eventually you kind of get a generation to get so far from the building of that wealth that they end up losing that wealth but that can take generations upon generations and even then, it doesn't necessarily mean, like, their influence is necessarily gone because the family tree is very, gets us much wider. So a couple a couple screw-ups doesn't necessarily ruin a whole generation's worth of wealth. Um, so in that case, you know, you look back at it and it's like, what's the big deal? Um, and, I, of course, people are going to point out, like, oh, there's all these, like, sort of, you know, upper middle class and rich people who are bleeding hearts who feel like they need to, you know jump in there and and fight for you know every victim uh and yes there, there's definitely the sense of sort of like this sort of like privileged knighthood kind of kind of dynamic where basically people who are kind of better off sometimes don't just accept it and they feel bad about being better off and sometimes overcompensate for it by trying overly hard to correct what they see are the injustices in the world uh i think probably I'll at least met one or two people like that. Um, but just because some people overcorrect doesn't mean there doesn't necessarily a correction isn't warranted. Okay. That's the thing. Just because some people are extreme doesn't necessarily mean the position they hold is completely invalid at a smaller scale. Okay. That's, 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 um, if anything, that's what I want you to take away from this conversation. Um, but at the same time, you know, like, if people can be held liable and have positive obligations to each other because of the actions of generations past, 
well, how far does that go? And what, what are the limits of that? Because that can get pretty ridiculous. Everybody finding, well, you know, your grandfather did this to me. Uh, I'm going to sue you. And you're saying, well, no, this is a more of a societal thing. This is not, this is not individuals suing each other because of what their grandfathers did. This is, you know, a societal, either, you know, a societal justice kind of thing or a societal healing kind of thing. And sure. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like, you're, it doesn't, taking action doesn't necessarily like fix everything, okay? So you look, for example, you, you take a look at uh, the Native Americans reservations, most of them feel like that wasn't really enough. Um, a lot of that doesn't, doesn't always turn out that well. Some of it did, you know, again, there's, 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 there's gonna be a variety of outcomes, but you know, p there's mixed feelings even afterwards. Um, and theoretically, if you were to do something like what pe people, you know, usually it's referred to as reparations, um, what not. And the question is, what form does that? Like, a lot of people just, like think, like, reparations means they're going to get a check. Um, probably not, okay? I mean, the thing is that, again, family trees widen. Government's debt's huge. The practicality of sort of just giving everyone a check and saying, you know, sorry for the past is, isn't is practical uh, economically or logistically. And then, two, sort of, like, how do you determine who gets a check? Like... What happens to what if like what if your you know your mom didn't know they get the check when they were initially issued and the law was initial passed? You're two generations later. Do you get to go back and make a claim, a reparations claim? And does everybody f further down the tree do and it multiplies the the deal? Like what you know? There's there's all sorts of these like logistical issues when you start making it sort of an individual thing. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, like, so, again, there's definitely, like, I think, truth, the concept of, like, societal healing. At the end of the day, like, you take a look at it, like, I do think a lot of political divisions and cultural divisions are only maximized when the economy is more difficult. People have a hard time getting a job. People have a hard time affording a house, getting an education. They... And again, not, and a lot of times it is because of reasons that are not necessarily under their control. Okay, you know, um, for any of you guys who understand like the, the, the ways that like housing prices go up and healthcare prices go up and, 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 and so forth and so forth, you can understand that like, hey, generationally, you know, people can say, well, those previous generations were able to do it, but the burdens are relatively greater. Okay, and there's relatively more community, more competition for very good reasons because you have more people who are free to participate in society and in the economy and things like that. That's a good thing because everyone should have the right to participate. But of course, it makes more competition, so that's going to split up the rewards even further, and that's going to push up the man. You're gonna, and then on top of it, you throw in you know a lot of these government type of. Um, government guaranteed loan programs that direct credit to very specific places to drive up prices very specifically there oftentimes in the things that we need the most housing and medical care and thing and school and education um yeah you're gonna start seeing some 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 inequities okay so some of these are just from you know just the adjustment of the economy dealing with more freedom which is good and some of it's because of bad policies that try to deal with, you know, um, scarce resources by pretending there wasn't scarce resources, you know, by just basically making credit just available to uh, more easily. Thinking that, well, if people can take out more loans, then there's more stuff, which the logic doesn't quite follow. And then, of course, you can think of things like local zoning, where basically previous generations who bought houses uh, get get on their zoning boards and they prevent really new housing to be made to make housing affordable for the next generation. So there's all these different things, okay? And that applies to people of any background that that makes life harder for. So there's definitely this, like, generational divide. And no one's, like, asking for, like, generational reparations um, because that's every generation. But there are ways you can, I can imagine, that sort of, like, libertarian-friendly that is social justice friendly and also friendly to the 
to conservatives in the sense that like they it, the solution doesn't necessarily have to sit there and make them feel like they're supposed to feel guilty because i mean again you have these two extremes where you again you have these people who you have basically people who are privileged and overcompensate in trying to be like oh i need to fix the things that that led to my privilege and then you have people who aren't privileged but are lumped in with that group okay so think like sort of low middle class poor um whites who you know their family didn't benefit from what necessarily what other white families experienced because maybe they just didn't have the same lack of education same generational wealth transfers um <clears throat> they were their family grew up were generations of their family grew up in places that went through a boom and bust think of like a detroit or something like that um you know there's there's a variety of reasons why there's there's the there's and they oftentimes have sort of an opposite response where they get angry that they're made to feel guilty about some sort of privilege they don't feel they have because their circumstances don't reflect this supposed injustice that was that should have given them this bountiful thing again everybody's different everyone's history is different and family lines and whatnot and context is different that's why like trying to solve this on a societal scale is oftentimes very tricky and requires really thoughtful conversation and most people don't have the time nor the ability to have in a sense it's like it's not and it's not a saying like what i mean by that is like being able to have sort of a nuanced conversation is something you have to practice at something you have to work on and there's lots of other things you need to work on uh and it is you know a sign of privilege if someone like let's say myself is able to be in a place where I feel like I can have nuanced conversation that have had the opportunities to practice and the time to practice um, being able to talk sort of in this sort of tone that I think people can hear. So point of being is that like a lot of times you have your opinion and you talk to someone and you, there seem things don't seem to align, but it's oftentimes a good reasons for that if you sit down and try to think about context, okay? Now I'm thinking about like, hey, uh, whatever. But taking a look at like, how could you form a, something that you could call reparations, again, the word is a word, um, that isn't sort of like a direct transfer payment because that's not gonna happen, meaning give individuals cash, that's not gonna happen. Um, but isn't necessarily like a direct sort of redistribution of wealth in the sense of saying, hey, we're just going to give a bunch of money to a thing um, and taxpayers, you're on the bill for it, whether you feel like that's justified or not, because that angers too. A way you can do this, and actually I think a lot of policy issues could be handled this way, and I think actually would be more effectively hand, 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 handled this next this way, is for the government to spin off like a separate non-profit entity. So the idea is that there's an independent organization, independent of the government. Okay, has its own board, uh, its own shares, things like that. Okay, it's, but it's non-profit. So the shares really are just for the value in the shares is really just governance in the sense you get to vote on who's on the board. And essentially, there's two ways you there's two ways that this organization gets funded one through an initial issuance of equity so you issue those shares and people who really care to have votes on the board can vote on the board and you know you can set some rules up to this offering to make sure that it's not like you know someone just buys it to to to, to sort of con to con to control it in some weird way okay you you'd have to think through sort of what the exact sort of board structure is to govern it appropriately um and again that goes for anything so you but you'd raise money there and again no one's being forced to do it so you're you're, you're generating funds um but again this organization has an initial charter that that basically states that this the money funds its purpose is to sort of handle x issues so this could be handling inequities among you know uh slave diaspora okay um Basically, so it's their job to figure out how to try different programs, to raise money, etc. And that goes to our second way that these organizations raise money is through donations. But the, these donations are special since this is one of these special sort of policy making organizations. Like every dollar is not like it 
dollar. It's not a deductible donation. It's a tax credit. So that means every dollar you put into X, these special nonprofits, is a dollar of taxes that you don't have to pay later. And I'm, sh I'm sure they have to set like a limit. So that way these don't become like everyone just tries to dump all their money into these things and say, look, I don't have to pay taxes, Ma. Uh, you know, to make it sort of viable. But theoretically, you could do this for all sorts of things. You could do this for education. You could do this for, um, you could do this for, you know, continuing, continuing sort of, uh, you know, healing or justice in all sorts of different ways, you know, whether it is, you know, you know, we have one of these organizations for helping people go through the immigration process or supporting women, uh, you know, trying to, you know, in, in women's reproductive rights uh, in a variety of different ways. But the idea is because the funding is voluntarily, I mean, again, you have these incentives of the tax credit and the equities that can then trade, um, that can be negotiable so they can be tradable like stocks for, for, for having that vote on who sits on the board and voting on sort of like, you know, efforts of how they want to use the money. So each of them become like their own little mini government just for that pot of money. Um, but that pot of money isn't a guaranteed pot of money. It's not coerced from anybody. Um, and their job is to, you know, basically meet their charter. You can you can handle all sorts of issues. You isolate them from politics a little bit or from like national politics because they're not the deal, you know, they're not appointed by the president. They're not, uh, they don't have direct accountability to the Congress once they're created. Um, but it allows you to generate the funds for these kinds of programs, create a very clear place where these kind of funds can get coalesced, but also create the, um, the, the mechanisms for governance that allow it. Because again, people will stop donating if it's not doing its job. Okay, uh, people will vote the people off the board of governors if they're not doing their job. Um, or, you know, the board of directors or whatever. They decide to call it. So point is, like, you know, if you sit down for a moment and you try to think critically about sort of like what each person cares about or what each person's concerns are, you can come up with solutions that, 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 that not perfectly, okay? Um, I don't think any of, the, any of the sort of grievances I've talked about are perfectly satiated by this, but they may probably satiated enough that they're feeling like things have moved forward from where they're at, Okay. And it's a repeatable sort of motion that can be used. So, yeah, that's that's really what I wanted to talk about. One, just kind of thinking through sort of like that that conversation of reparations, because you know people get so so gutturally angry on either side. Um, when when you when you break it down, like both sides have have reasons to feel the way they do. Um, and um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you all later. Again, follow me on Twitter at TheLoveitarian. And uh, yeah, have a good one.